Hi, I'm Juliet, and I am running my first 50 mile ultra. The fact that I said I would never do a marathon ever, and now I'm here doing a 50 mile race is just so insane to me. Beyond the fitness side of this, I feel like it's so much more for my mental health and choosing to become someone that I want to be. And there's a lot of symbolism in a sense with doing an ultra marathon. <laughs> There it goes. I heard something. There we go. Nice. My mom started to get sick in October, and we didn't get her diagnosis until January. I knew for my own mental health and well-being that continuing to train and have that to focus on was actually very helpful. Sadly, in May, she ended up passing away. Another moment of, do I just give up and stop doing this? But ultimately, the thing that makes me the happiest and feel the most sane is spending hours and hours outside in the mountains. I'm actually very thankful that I've had this race to focus on and I've been able to communicate with her when I'm out there on my runs. I talk to her all the time and I feel like she is really guiding me through this. This week was a mind fuck because I was feeling all of this energy and pressure because I have spent six months building up to this. Just finished a six mile run. That's my longest one that I'm gonna do before Saturday race day. Feeling good and uh, I just want this week to be over already. I'm having a hard time. It's like Christmas or something. All of that pent up energy made me have a ton of anxiety this week and especially being afraid, am I gonna get sick? Am I gonna roll an ankle? All that pressure kind of built up. Once I let out probably like three cries, I've felt more calm and now that we're here, I'm feeling just pumped and ready to do this and take on something that I have never done before. Good morning, we're about to head out and I got maybe an hour of sleep partially because I was so nervous, but also it was so loud in our Airbnb right above us, but I just gotta roll with it. I feel awake. I was a little nervous this morning. And then the win for the day is I went to the bathroom twice. And if you know anything about the nerves of wanting to make sure you go to the bathroom before you race, we're good there. So let's do this. We're headed down to the start line now. It's about 39 degrees. So we're good, we're in good shape. Three minutes. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. So we start the race at 6 a.m. in the dark. It is 3,500 feet of climbing in six miles you're just going up. Everybody's just going at whatever the pace is of the leaders in the front of the pack. And there's no way to pass anybody for, I would say, the first mile. You just have to kind of keep the pace of what everybody else is doing. And then after that first mile, we got into a big fire road. And from there, that sort of evens things out and people can have lots more space and go at the pace that they want to go at. That part I was actually looking forward to because I had done it before and I knew that I could do it in a pace that would be what I wanted. And actually on race day, which is typically what happens, I did an even better pace than when I practiced it. So that was really very encouraging for me by the time I got to that first aid station. I think we had about seven miles from the first aid station till Long Lake. So I knew, all right, we're gonna get to that half marathon point. That's a, a feat in and of itself to get to a half marathon and uh, that section is a lot of downhill so we're able to make up some good time but there's a lot of rocks and roots so it's pretty sketch at some points after a while you end up having nobody around you in these things so there's only I think like a 220 people that are in the race people get spread out quite a bit here 
Uh, got to that aid station, made it in and out of that really fast because uh, I wanted to get to mile 18, which is where the first drop bag was. All right, coming out of the second aid station, 13 miles, half marathon Double. down. Double fisting banana feel? and pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> That's your superpower, being able to eat and move. The eating part of this is so bizarre compared to anything else you do. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around being at mile, what, 13.5? Yeah. And getting to 50 right now. I just, it seems insane. Hey, one foot in front of the other. I know. But then seeing all these people finishing the 100 is I helping know. motivate me. When we got to mile 18, I had a little bit of a freak out moment because I felt this faint feeling in my head and a little bit nauseous. We were just non-stop till mile 18, just charging through. I need to problem solve and figure out, is it water? Is it electrolytes? Is it more carbohydrates? And just trying a little bit of everything. And what's tough is the last thing you wanna do is eat food in a moment like that. And that's the one thing I needed to make sure that I was doing. My life too. Yeah. I'm a bonking a bit right now. I don't know if I need calories or more sugar. I'm not sure yet. Salt, sodium, you good? Yeah. Let's get to that eight station. Yeah, we'll Want some up. chips or something. Yeah. I would say 30 minutes later, I was like a brand new person. And then I didn't really have a low like that for the rest of the race. I am now the biggest fan of banana, pretzel, and Coke on repeat. I never had that combination of food in my life, but man, I'm just like, I'm sticking to this plan because after mile 18, where I felt that nauseous feeling and I, I had those foods and it brought me back to life, mentally you're like, all right, this is what works and we're just gonna stick to it. After base camp, I knew that we had the next really big climb ahead of us as we made it up to Rabbit Ears Pass, and I also knew that this was gonna be the halfway point of the race. That milestone for me was huge, and I kept saying all day, I just wanna get to the halfway point because if I know that we are turning around and we're going back home, that just shifts me mentally every single time. I felt super strong going up to Rabbit Ears Pass and it's just such a beautiful part of the race too, getting up to that very high point, that peak. You've got these gorgeous mountains in the background, these beautiful red rocks, and I just felt so grateful to be at the halfway point of this race. We had some good speed on the way down. You go back to Dumont after that and you, you see that aid station again, so everybody knows and they're like, you made it. One thing I'm, I'm proud of myself is that I held in my poop for like 10 miles. <laughs> I knew that I had to go to the bathroom, but it was manageable enough for me to wait it out. But when we got back to that Dumont aid station after Rabbit Ears Pass, I told Mackie, I was like, I'm gonna have to stop at the bathroom. I'm gonna try to make it quick, but I really need to <laughs> relieve myself. And so I tried to make it in and out. I think we were pretty efficient at that point. So I went to the bathroom, he refilled his water, we were both done at the same time and then we continued on our way. And man, did I feel better after that. That was <laughs> really relieving for me. By the time we got to mile 31, I started to feel real fatigue and I wanted to run so badly at that point because a lot of that section was super runnable. These were the miles that I was afraid of. I was dreading. Just like getting to the 40s, that stretch, it's very mentally like, yeah. fatiguing. I feel like it's taking a million years to go a mile right now. Kind of keep positive, tell myself good things. I just allowed myself and gave myself permission to power walk and keep the average pace that I wanted for the day, which was 15 minute miles. So then we got to Long Lake which is I think about mile 36. And we knew, okay, this is the second to last aid station, which is exciting to think. There's only one more aid station to go. The green beginning to this point in the race. No way. There would only be 15 miles left and they would be hard. And that I would have to really dig deep and get them done. And here we are. 
And that is what's happening right now. So when you get to mile 40, and then have 10 miles left, and then get to mile 44, and have the six miles downhill. And those are my milestones. And man, those eight miles, that was a slog. That was intense. At that point, we saw a lot of other runners in the same position as us, just feeling like this is never ending to get to that final eight station. But mentally, I was so pumped to get to mile 44 because in my mind, that's when my race ended because I knew that once I got to 44, I would be able to complete this 50 miler. I have never been so happy to see an aid station when we got to that final one at Mount Warner and seeing people that we kept passing back and forth. The final aid station, the moment I've been waiting for, it's all downhill from here. It's not gonna be easy, but we're gonna finish. That's right. <laughs> I got my double fisting of bananas. <laughs> Coke, banana, pretzel, let's go, let's do this. We were in and out really quickly on that one. I think I was just excited to be able to finish and start that descent. I put my headphones in, I put music on, and we ran all six plus of those miles down. Those are our fastest miles of the day. The finish line was sort of anticlimactic, not because there wasn't amazing people there cheering you on. At that point, I was so overwhelmed with having run all day. By the time I, I finished it, I was like, oh, we did, we did it. We're here. 13 hours is a long time to be out on your feet. It's a, a long day. I think I'm going to be processing it as the days go on. I feel changed forever from doing this. I went into this with a goal of nice wanting to down, show but... myself how strong I am. Not even prove anything. It's not like I was trying to prove it to myself. I, I've been through a lot in my life and I've proven that I am a very resilient person and I can get through hard things. This was just showing me that I can take on things physically that are so challenging. More challenging beyond my wildest dreams, really. This has forever changed me in knowing what I'm capable of doing. Having such a complicated relationship with my body my whole life and at times hating on this body and feeling so disconnected from this body and wanting a different body, I wanted to show myself this body is perfect in its design. It can carry you so far. It is so resilient and strong and amazing. That little girl who grew up wanting to change the size of her thighs, wanting to always be smaller and be different, this meant so much for me and that I could really show myself this body is exactly the way that it needs to be and it can do so many things for you and there's nothing that needs to change about your body. This race is definitely the beginning of something new. I set out to feel changed and I feel changed.